is M, and today we are going to uh, going to uh, eco print or eco press steam some flowers um, using an iron. I on one of my heat press videos, someone had asked, uh, "Can you use an iron?" And I thought, "Well, I don't see why not." but I hadn't actually tried it myself personally. So the other day I did a test and I only did three pieces of paper and this is how they turned out. So yeah, and that's what we're going to demonstrate today. And I'm going to start with the very, very simple elements for people that have never done it before and don't have a heat press and don't want to take the time to do it in the oven because they just want to do some specimens. And um, so we'll start at the beginning and see where we end up. Let me bring these a little bit closer for a minute. I'm going to move the iron out of the way. I just wanted it in here um, for the lead into this video. The iron is on cotton. Uh, the water, the steam water, there's not really any in there. We won't be using steam for this procedure because we'll be adding our own water. Um, and it's seated up and ready to go. So I'm going to move it out of the way. And bring these closer to show you what uh, what the results were from my tests. This was impatient, and uh, viola, and the good old uh, tick seed. This turned out really well. This was um, Queen Anne's lace leaf. I was just shocked at how well that turned out. I mean, it almost looks like it was stamped. And then here's some more Queen Anne. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, this was all the different Queen, you know, Queen Anne's, but at different stages of its growth. So I'm, and then this was some dahlia petals. Not the whole, not the whole dahlia head like you've seen in some of my. Uh, heat pressing videos but just the petals and I again I was really surprised at how just the individual petals look at this color I didn't do anything I just ironed the petals and there there it was the one thing about using the iron as opposed to the heat press and the oven and or boiling on top of the stove is this is all personal opinion play around and do your own stuff but to me, uh, I think that these layers need to be not this thick. In other words, I wouldn't use this paper because it's pretty thin. Uh, well, I take that back. I did. I was going to say I wouldn't use it to put a whole head of dahlia in there, but I did. Um, which is what this sheet was. I took a dahlia head and I put it in. This is a, a thin newsprint paper. And uh, it turned out pretty good, actually. It's wrinkly, but look at the way it colored up. So I guess you can put a thick, bulky head in, but uh, I'd probably try to lean more towards the thinner items, if at all possible. But play around and see what works right for you. So having said all that, let's get started. Uh, one other thing I did, this is a parchment paper, and this is another um, uh, Queen Anne's Lace Leaf. And this was the other side of the Queen Anne's Lace Leaf. So as you can see, one side uh, gave a better print than the other because this was back to back. I'm going to move all these out of the way. Now we're going to talk about the prep. So if you've not done this before and you and all you have is an iron and you just want to test it out, a couple of key things that you're going to need. I really personally think you need to have some Teflon sheets. Uh, you want some sort of surface. This is a wood table with Teflon sheet on it. Um, you want some sort of surface that you can iron on. I have a tabletop ironing board, but I'm not going to use that for this because I, I don't want to, you know, get any any steam or leakage that might happen uh, on my, what, what it was my ironing board. So all this is is a piece of vermiculite, which is kind of heat proof. Um, you could probably just use a piece of wood. And then I've got one of these Mod Podge uh, silicone mats on top just for a little, uh, little gives a little cushion when you're ironing and then Teflon pads which I'm going to sandwich the paper in between these Teflon pads and then we're going to iron on top of the Teflon pad. Uh, a couple of things that I also think go with this, this is because I'm going to start out with paper that isn't prepped because 
we're just going to start at the very beginning. I haven't, a couple of these papers, I haven't taken the time to, to put any alum on them yet. And so we're just going to do something. This, this would be called the down and dirty get started way of eco printing. And here I have alum water and a sponge. So that's what we're going to use to, to uh, prep our sheets that haven't been prepped yet. And also I have a spray bottle of alum water that I always have on hand. I have a spray bottle of vinegar water, which is usually about a 40% more or less vinegar to water. It's not an exact science. I have some regular water in a spray bottle. And then I also, today and the other day, is I've got some coffee water for um, just adding a little bit more not so white on some of the white sheets if you want to do that. Um, I also am not opposed to uh, using some spray like some watercolor diluted in water or uh, brushes diluted in water or whatever sometimes if you want to add more excitement but we're not going to do any of that kind of enhancement today we're just gonna if we spray with anything that has a tint to it, it'll be coffee water the first piece of paper that we're going to use is simply this is office depot copy uh, multi-purpose and copy paper um, that I that I use for in my business for basically all my uh, more or less printing needs and nothing has been done to it and we're going to do it in ha we're going to press it folded in half because we're doing uh, test samples with the flowers that I brought in so we'll prep, we'll prep that and we'll get started what we're going to be drawing from today and we won't be using all this because there's too much in here but I just went around into the garden and I uh, I picked these plants, so we're going to uh, we're going to do some specimen pressing today on a couple of these and see what happens. But I just wanted you to see the pan that we're drawing from. Um, it's a it's a rainy day out there, and the nice thing about this eco printing is that it doesn't matter if the flowers are wet. And the other reason why I want to get some more eco printing done here pretty quick, and I'm probably going to do some heat pressing today with a big press is because all these flowers are just starting to die and go away. There aren't very many good ones left. And um, the time to uh, to do it now before winter really sets in is, uh, well, now. So that's why I kind of have an urgency there because the flowers aren't going to wait for me. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to procrastinate. So piece of paper, nothing's been done to it. I'm going to move this back out of the way. And what I'm going to do to prep this paper is I'm going to get this all in water. I'm going to stick my sponge in it. Get it a little bit wet. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm simply going to wet the paper. And I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know if I'm getting the paper too wet. I don't remember the other day if I wet it, wet both sides or not. But we, I am today or now. We'll try it. We'll try a couple different things and see what happens. Because this is so wet and it's just thin bond, or I don't know if it's bond paper, thin paper. We're going to do some thin flowers. I'm really anxious to see how this impatient turns out. So I'll, I'll just, uh, we'll go ahead and, and do face down for being, oh, there's a little critter, get out of the way. Um, <laughs> on one of my videos uh, a long time ago, I smashed a pinpoint size spider and boy, the, uh, the, the comments on there were, were um, amazing about how I killed this pin size, size spider and and uh, so on. So I don't know what to do with this guy. Here, let me just gently put him outside. That way no one will be offended. There, the ant's still alive and no one got hurt in the making of this video. So that should uh, make people happy. All right, so... Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, we walk outside every day and these microscopic creatures, I'm sure we step on them and things happen. But yeah, people were all outraged that, uh, that, 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 I, that I did that. I thought it was a fleck of dust and then it ended up not being. And I, anyway, enough about that. So the ant's alive. 
The other thing that uh, I, I did in the um, the videos that I did here in the last week or so, I did some um, heliotrope, which is what this is, and I don't know if it turned out or not because if you watched my reveal vid video yesterday, um, <laughs> I have no idea. I, I if it did, I can't see it, but I really want to know if it turned out. So. Here we go with some heliotrope. I'm also not doing any more than one layer because the video that I did yesterday I talked about, I made it way too complicated. Nobody shined through. And so, uh, yeah. And here are some heliotrope leaves. So let's see if how those work. So let's see, this is impassioned leaves. Let's put the, let's do everything face down so we know. Um, so here's heliotrope. All right. And what else do we have that we can put down? Let's put a couple of hydrangeas just to finish out the round end out, rounding this out. Some blossoms around. While I, I don't want to do one more than one layer, I, I don't want a whole bunch of white space. Uh, anyway, need something here, here. Remember our fold lines here, so we want to uh, keep some stuff. Okay, I think we're gonna call that good. Trying to work with my left hand, even though I'm right-handed, to keep uh, keep my arm out of the video so you can see better. All right, got a paper towel back here. Wipe my fingers off. Let's build our sandwich. Move this out of the way, and here we go. This is always so exciting. I'm just becoming addicted to this. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I always should have done it sooner. I wanna put a little bit of vinegar water on here. So now I kinda of ruined that because I lifted it up. Let's put this leaf back down. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Get on there. And we're gonna put a little bit more. I'll spray some olive water on here. And let's go. I won't do any coffee. We'll do any coffee right now because we want to see what happens. Putting the sheet on top. Hot iron. Oh no, don't tell me this is one of those kind of eco irons where it turns itself off because you haven't used it. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when that when you used to buy a toaster, you could have toast in a matter of a minute or you know a couple of minutes. Now the, to the the toasters nowadays that want to protect you from yourself, it must take five minutes to get a piece of toast. Okay, this is. I guess it is hot. It was just taking a minute. I'm going, yeah, tell you. It's one of these things that turns itself off because you don't use it just to protect you. So, yes, it's pressing now. I got all concerned when I didn't have to. But look at how quick that is. I mean, I just can't believe it. Look at... Now, it might be the paper because the paper's so thin. Now, see this white area? It, it, now, this is, um, this is when you need to add more water. And I'm going to add a little coffee water in these wider parts now, just because because I'm not ready to take it apart yet. But what was that? A couple seconds? 15 seconds or so? I did bring a hot pad down with me the other day when I was testing this. And, uh, well, that's probably not good for the camera. I got my hand over there just so the steam doesn't come right up on the lens. Okay. Okay. 
I am standing back. My arms are full length. My head is kind of down below the steam level because I don't want to bring the steam in. Um, I've, you've heard me warn about this before. Have adequate ventilation, which let me open the door wider. You want adequate ventilation and uh, don't breathe in the steam. And I think I'll move the camera back even a little bit more just because now that we're getting into some action here, I, uh, I don't want the camera that close. See, let's see how quickly some of this stuff is drying out. Let's turn it over. We could probably reveal it right now, but I just want to give it a pressing on the side. Oh, let me make a comment about this iron. I have this old iron I've had for about 30 years, which is upstairs that I'm not using, and it's just a regular steel or whatever they used to make the iron surfaces out of, and it's always just been used for crafts. And I got this iron at a um, garage sale at the beginning of the year. I paid three bucks for it. Actually, it was an estate sale. And it has a Teflon uh, surface, and Wow, I love it. I, what's that? Now that I've gone Teflon, I'll never go back. It was just amazing how, how nice it is for this. Okay, this was... Is that the impatient, impatient leave? That didn't... Well, no, that didn't do much of anything. Let's do it for a couple more seconds. Okay. Some of that stuff, that, that's the um, heliotrope. That well, looks like that's doing good, but the leaf wasn't. Okay, so let's look. All right, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and move on, but yeah. So now we can start making a mess. Scraping this. You've got to be very careful because this, this paper is so... Um, thin. Oh, now the, there's the, uh, this is kind of turning color. The fall, the uh, fall, um, uh, late summer going into fall hydrangea. And I was wondering if, if that would impart more color than earlier in the year when it's just real blue and more tender. So... I did rinse this paper, this kind of paper, uh, under the tap water the other day, and it did hold up, but you have to be really, really gentle. Uh, so yeah, the heliotrope seemed to work. The heliotrope leaves, not so much. Yeah, the heli, look at, look at that, so, yeah. The, the blue of the heliotrope kind of reminds me, let me get a, a piece of cardboard to hold it up. Um, yeah, that's almost clean enough. I don't know if I'm going to need to rinse it or not. Anyway, all right, let's take a closer look. So you can see the impatience, the heliotrope, and what was this leaf? Oh no, this was the heliotrope leaf. The heliotrope leaf worked, but the impatient leaf didn't. And the heliotrope leaf went um, yellow. Okay, let me move this out of the way. Got a piece of paper behind me for, for setting things on. I think if I had to do it more, I'd probably maybe put some coffee uh, water on the other side. Did we only spray one side? I can't even remember. And also, maybe it was too wet for the impatience. We'll, we'll uh, see if uh, maybe we're over-wetting things. Because maybe by over-wetting things, we're washing them out. So that's something to experiment around with. Now, this one is a piece of newsprint. 
Uh, it's a very thin, I'm looking at it, it's P-A-C-O-N newsprint paper. I bought it because I ran out of uh, my other brown paper, uh, this stuff, from my regular pressing. And thinking that, that they touted this in the literature as being uh, heavyweight newsprint. Well, no, nah, this is what I was hoping for. It's not. It's just really, I think it's even thinner than regular newspaper. So it, it, it doesn't work at all for, for my purposes for um, traditional pressing. So I'm trying to find other things to do with it and use it in the crafts. And so let's... Let's um, let's try this. Okay, back to let's wet our paper with the alum water. I'm just going to do one side this time for the sake of uh, time, because you get the idea, and we'll be spraying anyway. What do we want to try this time? Let's try some. This is, uh, what do we call this? I'm going to move this over. This is, um, a lot of people have this in their yard. Geranium. Garden geranium. And I know that these generally impart a lot of color. We're just going to do what I wanted to try to do the other day in the last video I did was have a potpourri of color. Okay. And then here's some uh, just trying to find some smaller. Here's some uh, this is coral bell leaves, which are so beautiful. I'm going to put some of them around just because. I didn't bring any of the regular geranium leaves in. I should have. I'll try that later when I do the heat press. And here's some, uh, this is uh, heavenly bamboo. And again, I'm just doing this for testing purposes. I, I want to see if these things impart any color, so I know whether to get more serious about using a given botanical or not. So that's what this is about. Okay, and then let's put a couple of buds around from this geranium. This will just be a geranium motif. And we'll just leave it, leave it at that. All right, let's see what happens. Spray a little bit of vinegar water. And a little olive water. Close up our sandwich. And Here we go. Standing back, putting my head down below steam level so I don't breathe any in, in any of the steam. I'm just kind of lifting and pressing down, lifting and pressing down. Now I'm going to hold it down longer. No, I mean, really, because this is Teflon, I could probably just do it right on top of here, but... Well, maybe I do have some steam coming out of here. I thought all the water was gone. Oh, I got the... I got the steam setting on. Ugh. I wonder... No wonder there's so much steam coming up. Okay, well, there isn't... Huh. No wonder I'm going, why is there so much steam? There wasn't that much steam yesterday. The nice thing about doing these videos live is you can see all the bloopers. 
I, I can't hide the bloopers from you. Okay, well, maybe that'll help it to not be quite so wet. Okay, let's do it a little more. Yeah, see, there's not as much steam now. Poof. This is one of those um, crafts that take a while, but it's interesting because you never know what you're going to get. You just never know. I don't know where this fell out of. This doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. But I expected more from that leaf. I don't know why I expected more, I just did. Okay, we're still in camera. And if you haven't already, you can fast forward on the timeline because as I've already showed you how I prep this, so now I'm just going to be doing some testing. I don't know how long I'll have this on, but uh, if the camera abruptly shuts off, it's because it got too hot. Yesterday when I was doing that video, after about 25 minutes, it just shut off. And I wasn't really done. Well, I was done, but I, I hadn't shut it off myself. And when I felt the camera, it was just super hot. Okay, well, this is not... Um, being as exciting as I thought. So I'll just press this side one more time. Let's put the Teflon back on because it was sticking a little bit. All right, let's call that good. I'm going to get on to something else. Take it apart. See if we have anything. Oh, oh, okay. All right, maybe we do. This is, gets very slimy, so I'm definitely going to need to wash this off. But I want to get enough off to see if it left anything. So, okay. Yeah, we got a little bit of action going on here, but I'm going to need to take this up to the sink and rinse it. Here's the bud. Let's let's take the bud off and see. Yeah, you get a little outline on the buds. So part of it is I wonder. Okay, am I am I steaming or putting leaving it on there too long? Do I should I leave it on there longer? Would I get better color? That's part of the trial and error. Okay, so if you just want some splotchy color, that will do it. Now, remember, this is not washed. But, uh, huh. That's on that really thin newsprint. Okay, let's try something different. Uh, this is this is this is watercolor paper that I've used in the heat press. It's already been alum, so I've already uh, put it in alum water and then let it dry. And we will do two things at the same time. And see how the watercolor paper holds up. It's it's a lot thicker. Yeah. Now, something that I was really curious. I try. Um, I want to know if larkspur will work. Okay. There's that. And I'm going to add a couple of leaves at the bottom just to make it more of a bouquet effect and then 
hope, hope, hope that it works. And I think that I'm going to keep it simple. I could always say that, and then I, I don't. Uh, and I think for this, okay, spray it with a little vinegar. And a little alum. I'll put a little alum on this one while I'm doing. And then I am going to put a little bit of uh, coffee on this side. Oh, I'll do it here too. Just... All right. Now on this one, I want to do Cosmos. I hardly have any Cosmos left either, and these aren't. You know, they're kind of funked out. But for for what we're doing, it should be fine. And what do we want to put with the Cosmos? Um, what do we want to complement it with? I'm going to use this is uh, this is hydrangea that was from from you know more earlier season. In other words, it hasn't started turning that that color that it, it turns in the fall. So we'll see if that imparts anything. We did get some color on the first thing that we did in this video from the later when it starts uh, maturing and drying out. Okay, we're going to keep that simple. We're going to keep it simple. Here we go. Let's close this up. And we're going to need, we need, we need, uh, we need water. It's too dry. And we're going to close this up. See, it just drives me nuts, though, that there's nothing in here. That's, that's my problem. Ah. Okay, leave it, Emily. Okay, here we go. Leave well enough alone and try it. this on top and press. But really, I mean, for the price of an inexpensive iron, preferably with Teflon base or whatever nonstick base and some paper and alum and vinegar, and just do some playing around. Don't need anything fancy. Now I like all of the methods. Uh, you know, the boiling in the pot, the cooking in the oven, either submerging or putting it in, uh, putting it submerging in water or steaming it like a cooking a turkey, or the the, uh, the big heat press spec there. And now the iron. I think the iron is really good for these. Uh, when you want to just do something quick or test it, let's turn this over. It's hot. Be careful you don't burn yourself. Okay, I'm going to spray a little vinegar water and a little coffee. Now, I can tell this isn't ready because I don't see anything, any, uh, discoloration on this side of the paper, which is what we want. Well, that coffee smells good. <laughs> I got a whiff of it just spraying it on there. Uh. My husband and I are already thinking through what we want to do next spring, planting new flower beds and getting ready to clean up the yard. I really want to start cleaning up the yard now, but there's just enough stuff left. 
that A, they're going to seed and I want to save some seeds so I can't really cut everything down yet, and B, there's still enough bees and hummingbirds and other things in the garden that I just want to, don't want to just go out there with the hedge trimmer and start, you know, mowing everything down, so to speak, and then they don't have any food anymore going into the winter. So that's what's stopping me now from from just going out and starting whacking everything, even though I want to. This is coffee water again. I want more color coming through. And oh, I've got some anemone here I want to see, and I've got some uh, snapdragon. <clears throat> and some begonia that I haven't done before. Just giving you a highlight so you know if you want to stick around. Uh, oh, oh, here, I'll do this next. If, if you're thinking about leaving, uh, let me stick around long enough for me to show you some these petals uh, that I'll do next, since I just remembered about it. They, they, hopefully they turn out as neat as they did in the test, because that it was a wow, in my opinion. So you're starting to see a little bit more now, a little bit more ghosting. So that means we're getting, we're getting there. Uh, let's see, let's get a little bit more water. Can't remember, did I just turn it or not? I don't know. That's what happens. Short-term memory. So we'll probably call it good here in a minute <clears throat> for the sake of time. Oh, we're at 37 minutes and it hasn't browned out yet. Okay. That's good. That's good to know. I did turn the camera off and make sure it was all, all nice and cool before I turned it on to start videoing so that maybe uh, it wouldn't overheat so much. I'm pressing real hard now. Let's make some good contact. All right, look, that's enough. I'll be done. Let's see if we start again. Oh, okay. Ooh, that, look at that. How pretty. Cosmos are pretty reliable, so I kind of thought that something should happen. Ah, uh, oh, can't, sorry, but I have to be, yay! <laughs> so, so I'm just, this is exciting. I, I had no idea. Well, this just goes to show because I used, um, I used, I'm pretty sure I used these in the, the last dime that I did. And when you see that video, they just, they didn't turn out because I had too much on the page. Look at that. <gasps> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Even even the uh, even the the, the bluish. Uh, see how what a difference this. I don't know if the difference is the, that this is watercolor paper or not, but uh, I don't really have to probably even have to rinse these much. It's rolling rolling off pretty good. Okay, let me pull these up to the camera so you can see. I am just really happy about this. Okay. Look at that. Larkspur. Queen Anne's Lace Leaf. This was the Hydrangea. And then this was the um, Cosmos. And you see how one side imparts more color than the other. So it's just a matter of figuring out you know, which side. But they both look good. This was the front. This was the back. Wow. Wow, wow. Okay. Love it, love it, love it. Move these back here. Uh, I wanted to show you, and I'm going to use, worked really well on the, co in, on the, um, the regular copy paper. So let's see if it works as well on the already olumned watercolor paper. 
So first thing I want to do is put some water down. And you really need to water these up good. Cause... Alrighty. And I think I'll add some vinegar now. Uh-oh. I have this. No, my water spray bottle is... Okay, maybe I turn the turn the top. Okay. Oh, that's pretty wet. Uh, oh, I want to show you. Let me get these. Okay, we're this is we are going to we are going to use these are dahlia petals, so. We're going to make an arrangement with just the petals. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make a flower. And I'm gonna put them all these are all front side down. Now this is gonna take a little longer, of course, because we're arranging it, but if it turns out like the other test that I did, it's more than worth it. Okay, so there's that, and then we'll do one up here, and then let's do some over here. Because remember, we're going to be folding our paper now. I hadn't tested these yet. This is um, a different dahlia that we're going to test. So let's uh, maybe I'll move these out of the way till we do our spiral. Now these are a little bit more than a single layer, just because of the way that they're they're laying, but that's okay. And you can see the, the variegated color on this. This is just absolutely gorgeous. This is, I think it's called, they're called spider dahlias. It's got a different, a couple different color spider dahlias out in the, the garden. And then they're, they're coming on now. Whereas these other ones are going away. Uh, these are coming on. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need something in here uh, just because. Uh, I don't know if I brought in any. Oh, I didn't bring in any dahlia leaves. Dahlia leaves work well. That much I know. Here, I brought in a little bit of this. Uh, this is Nemesia. This is, this is a, a form of a monkey's flower. Uh, in red, I'm used to seeing them in that kind of yellowish color you know, that you can get at the garden center. So let's try a little of this. We'll add this here, because we have some white space left, so we can we can give it a try. Put one here. This stuff wants to stick to my finger. And we'll put one here, and here. Let's see, do I have it any more? Well, I do, but I can't find it. Okay. All right, that should give us enough to see if it works. All right, I wish I'd add something there. Okay. See, that's my problem. I can't leave well enough alone. Just can't leave well enough alone. Oh, well. I don't want to infringe upon flowers, but I do want something more than nothing. All right, let's leave that. Flip the, flop this over. Okay, it's pretty still pretty damp, so we're going to leave it. We're going to go with that. All right, let's, fingers crossed that we get something. Yeah. 
I can't wait to put the garden to, to rest for the winter and and uh, I have to admit by the time summer's over I love summer don't get me wrong but I'm also because I, I'm a craft and do inside projects I also don't mind winter uh, and of course in my area it rains a lot we do have our fair share of uh, gale force winds and storms and flooding and probably I should take a moment uh, now that I'm talking about weather to, to say, uh, I understand there's a hurricane heading towards the south, southern part of the United States. And uh, stay safe, need any evacuation uh, requests, and uh, you know, take care of your fellow man. And let's hope that uh, everybody makes it through up the other side uh, as best as possible. And my heart goes out to everybody. So, uh, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about that. And, uh, of course, right now our weather here is just heading into the rainy season. And I want to put the garden to rest because I, 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 I haven't been, had time to do any crafting. I, I really want to create some stuff myself. Uh, but I'm so busy pressing flowers and, you know, putting... I, mean, I, I have to take care of the business first, orders and... And putting bread and butter on the table always has to come first over crafting, but uh, I have a lot more time in the winter to do that. Because you don't have to water the garden, you're not planting things. So I kind of look forward to winter, because then I can get my inside projects done. And at this time of the year, the garden looks so tired. It's not fresh anymore. And just everything's you know turning brown. I love the colors, the things that turn colors, but otherwise everything's turning brown and it's just uh, it's just this tired, like I said. Time to time to wrap it up. So a little coffee water. Put a little bit more water, water, because this paper dries out pretty quick. And see, we're not getting too much here yet. We're still waiting for a little bit more staining to come through. I always use that as a, a gauge. Now I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on. Let me see if the pressure helps. See if we get a little bit more. Let's take a peek. See if anything's happening. Ooh. Okay, well I'm I'm starting to pass the point of being able to Okay. Oh! <laughs> oh! Okay, clap, clap, clap again. Alright, there's another I know I'm being silly. Oh, oh my goodness, alright. It did what I thought it was going to do. Sometimes you, it ends up being more and better than what you thought, and then sometimes it doesn't turn out anything like you thought. But this is, this is wonderful. Oh, let me hold this up. Okay, let me get the cardboard. Alright, so these are just the petals off of the dahlias. And what I love my tweezers go. I don't know. Um, but look at how how the colors um, gradiate, you know, from that yellow into kind of that, that purplish brownish. And then this really uh, turned orange. Uh, the other reason why I wanted to do these leaves is I actually haven't uh, picked off a whole cactus dahlia head yet to put in the heat press, which I would do in the bigger heat press, heat press, not on here, because those things are big and they are bulky. But the answer initially is that they would be worth it because it looks like they impart color. Um, I am going to, uh, just because I want to, I'm going to spray a little coffee water on these white parts. Just to make them not so white. There. Let that dry on there. So 
So that's pretty cool. Especially these guys. All right. I think that I'm finding that I like watercolor the best. This is a blotter paper. I actually sell not as much as I used to, but I still have a few traditional presses on my regular website. And this was blotter paper that for that. For the, I think this is seven by nine, six by nine. But anyway, this is already alumed, and we'll try that because I've got loads of it on hand. And I'm trying to find things to do. I, I'm not really selling, you know, I'm not really going into selling the flower presses as much as I used to because I more I'm just advocating using magazines and books and stuff, especially for smaller scale. Uh, but certainly you can buy flower presses. They do come in handy. I do have one for myself that I take in the car. They're really handy for, for traveling with. All right. Oh, here. I want to try these petals. This is really thick. I don't want to put this in here. This paper is too thin in the iron. But let's let's try some petals. Let's do the same thing. Let's let's build ourselves a little a little ray with these petals. I want to see if these impart any color. This is a, a blanket flower. I think is the common name. It's, uh, these press really, they, these hold their color really well in the traditional press. They're they're wonderful. Um, okay, and I also want to find out if these. Uh, this is a uh, begonia. Again, this is really thick, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut this thing off there, and then what else? Oh, oh, I'm gonna wait for watercolor paper. We'll do a watercolor paper next. This is anemone, and I want to give it. I'm gonna give it, and I brought in some fuchsia, the full effect. So let's just. Keep this one simple. Let's do what else do we have? Since we've got some begonias on here, let's let's do some more begonia. Mm -hmm. Now remember when we did the begonia earlier in the the video, the leaves didn't really turn out very well. Not like not like I hoped that they would. Okay. All right. You know what we could do is we could take some of these, these the inside of that uh, galardia, and just put it in there and see what happens. Because sometimes these centers do amazing things. I was kind of surprised, but it'll it'll cut down on the bulk. So we'll try that. Let's see what uh, what we find out. Okay, so let's call that good. Let me wipe my hands off. Uh, let's see. Did we do vinegar water yet? I can't remember. Mm. And. It, this was already alumed. Okay, this was that blotter paper that I already alumed. All right, and I do want to use a little coffee stain or coffee water. And let's go. I have high hopes for the blanket flower, and I have some high hopes for that uh, begonia. We'll see what happens. The other thing is um, 
putting vinegar on paper probably makes the paper probably takes a non-acidic paper and makes it acidic, I would imagine. Uh, so I think you just have to take into consideration that we're not making museum quality pieces here. If, if, if these last for, you know, a number of years, that and the fact that a lot of plants will, colors, as, as, a, as I have found out in regular flower pressing, will hold their color for, for years and years, and others won't hold their color for very long. So I don't imagine that some of these things are going to remain colorful for years and years. Some of them probably will, but some of them, pro ooh, some of them probably won't. Uh, but things that are kept in journals or bookmarks or things where they're not kept in direct sunlight, uh, I would, would expect to kind of keep their color for a little bit. Also, anything that I am using in projects, uh, we set that there and go grab. This stuff. I am in love with this two times. This, I've got semi gloss, gloss, and uh, matte. And it says fast drying, non yellowing, UV resistant. So before I use, a pro do, use these papers in a project, I put a light covering of this on because I figure, well, Maybe it will and maybe it won't give it a little bit more UV protection from fading, but it doesn't hurt. I This is so versatile that I, I haven't found anything that it doesn't work well on, at least in my crafting. So whether you want to protect something with that or not, that's up to you, but that's what I use and I've never found it hurts anything. Oh, this is just, I think this is going to turn out really well too. This is that blotter paper. Oh, yay, okay. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so isn't that interesting that the blanket flower went purple? All right, and here's the center. The center just kind of did a blob. Okay, there wasn't did some blobs, but the blanket flower went purple, and then this begonia. Um, let's use this to scrape off gently. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Mmm. All right, that's a keeper. And and what was this? Oh, this was the red begonia. So begonias really work well. The blank flower worked well. Look at how beautiful that is. Since you see this direct TV card laying around with a chip, uh, I just want you to know that, uh, in case you're wondering, well, why is she using that? Wasn't well, that supposed to be in a machine? Um, we switched our, our cable, or we switched from direct PV to uh, cable. And they kept telling me they were going to send me envelopes to send these cards back. I've got a couple of these cards that I, I was going to, that were supposed to be sent back. And I called them, well, I had at least three conversations with them, and each time I said, well, I still have the cards. And, uh, each time they said, well, we sent you out an envelope. Well, I don't know what the deal is because I never got an envelope. And they, I was told that three times to send them back. But she said I wouldn't get charged for it. So, And, of course, what good does this do me? I don't have service with them anymore. So what having the card in it. So anyway, I'm using it for crafts because they never sent me an envelope to send them back. But it works perfectly fine for crafts. I just didn't want you to think I was defacing <laughs> their... Uh, their card for some weird reason. They had their chance to get it back three times. So now I'm just using it. Look at how gorgeous that is. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, okay, that was that red begonia. That was that, what was that, that apricot larger one? And then this was the, the blanket flower that went purple. I want to use some watercolor paper. Let's do a fuchsia. Okay, here's a piece of watercolor paper. Let's. This is not. This is. 
I don't know how that got in there, but this is probably some delusion spray or watercolor spray or something. Uh, but we will leave that on the outside. All right, let's, uh, there's our vinegar water here. We're probably going to call it quits here in a minute. We're already in an hour. I'm, I was trying to keep my video shorter, and I'm not doing a very good job. But I thought, well, maybe something might be interesting to see what Fuchsia does. If I can find it, here it is. All right. We're just going to lay this down. Let's feather it out a little bit. Let's bring it down further. Okay. I got something on my hands. I hope this works out. Let's put some more fuchsias here. And all right. Okay. And then. Oh, I should probably just leave it and see what happens. Let's just leave it. Let's take a little bit of coffee stain. Let's let the fuchsia be the star of the show, if it does anything. All right. Get ready to do this. Here's hoping Fuchsia does something. And is there anything else that I really want to show you before I turn this off? Because we're getting down now. See, I've got, oh, I'm going to do this. We'll do this. We'll get a piece of watercolor paper and do... Do these this whatever this is daisy type thing and a rose we'll do that next and then then we'll call it good i think we'll call it good at that oh oh but i want to do this too maybe we're going to need a big, bigger piece of watercolor paper we'll use a larger piece of watercolor paper and just kind of do a potpourri of other important things that i want to test all in one and then then we'll be done just so you know where where we're headed if you're still tuning in Okay, I'm pressing harder now. And while that's pressing, there's a big piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to fold it in half while, we're, while that's doing its thing. Get this ready. I think this will fit on there. Yeah, it'll take up most of the space, but it will fit on there. And we'll just... Put it, oh, that was stupid. I put my hand on the side of there and got a little bit of steam. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, let's put a little bit more. I think I'll put some coffee water on here. Turn it over again. I'm not, I'm, we're seeing a little action here in the fuchsia. I think we're going to get some ghosting, but I don't think it's going to impart a lot of color. This is um, this is where, if I had my uh, sprays, which I'm going to get right now, well, I don't have anywhere to put them. This is, I think this is Barn Door Distress Ink. 
we're going to try it what the heck. I don't think this is going to part a lot of color, and I don't know if this is going to, but I'm going to just spray the back of this a little bit, just because I want to. So, I don't know if it'll impart a little color on the other side or not, but we'll find out. Like I said earlier in some of my videos, I'm not opposed to using some other art things to uh, to play around with because that's what that's that's what crafting an art is. It's it's taking something, trying it one way, and going, oh yeah, that's cool. And the other, oh, I know the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick was a lot of people like to doodle and and uh, and uh, enhance their things. And I was thinking, for example. If you're a doodle or something like this, you could take your, uh, you know, your Posca pins, or you probably want to use a paint pen on something like this, or your jelly pins, and you could, you know, you could do your own little flower doodles, you know, enhancing the petals. There's no reason why if you wanted to do some further water coloring on things like this, these don't have to to stay the way they come out. Although I think they're beautiful the way they are, but depending upon how you want to use them, as a background or an accent piece or or something for something else that you you can do anything that you want to it and use any kind of artist technique to further enhance them. I haven't gotten that far because, as I said, I I I haven't had a chance to do my own projects yet. Um, I think that I want to do one more round, and then we'll call it good. See if we can. And then we'll do the potpourri paper, and then we're done. And actually, this is taking longer than I thought, so I may not get the big heat press out today. I mean, this is working so well that I'm just, I might just do a couple more smaller pieces off camera to satisfy my urge to, uh, see, that's doing some pretty good stuff there. We're not getting much of anything back here. And we'll focus on that. Okay. Let's be done with this one. I think we got a little bit more action this last time. We've got the stem showing where on the last, before we did that last round, we didn't have that. Ooh, okay. Yeah, all right. I'm happy. I, uh, I think that that actually came out better than I expected. Rolling this off like this gentle roll. This paper is pretty tough, but on some of your thinner papers, you just want to kind of gently, when they're wet, they roll real well. See how they roll like that? And then it will help to, to, to take the other stuff off. Yeah, most of that's off there. So this is this is the uh, you know this is color imparted by the the fuchsia. Mhm. Mm okay. And interesting that the fuchsia leaves kind of uh, went yellow. They gave a yellow ghosting color. So that's pretty interesting. All right, our last sheet. And I'm going to need to, uh, yeah, it's barely going to, it's not really going to fit on here. Uh, yeah, well, we'll do it anyway. All right, this is very, very dry, so let's get 
get it wet. mat. Get this to where it's lining up better. Still dry spots under here. We want, we want water, water, water. Okay. Make sure we're on. We're not going to be on, on the, the entirety of it down here, but we're going to more or less be... Okay. Um... All right, excuse me, I knocked the camera. Let me turn it a little bit. Okay, so I think I'm gonna quadrant this. And what I mean by that, is this will be the Viola area, and then I want to try these. Uh, I did snap dragons uh, in a different video a while back, and they worked really well. So I want to do. I want to do them this way. Okay, and then I've got some roses here. Let's do them. Let's open it up. I'm sure it's starting falling apart, but that's okay. I'll put that up here. And then, well, it's really falling apart. I knew it would fall apart, but I was wanting it to fall apart that much. Let's cut this guy in half. I have less bulk. And then I think this one's going to fall too. But we'll go ahead. And then rose leaves usually do well. So let's put a rose leaf in here. Some rose leaves in there for some added color. And then, did we get those daisy things yet? No. I want to see how these turn out. They're kind of thick, but we'll leave them. This is what I mean by clustering. We're just going to do little, uh, little sections. brought in a couple of oh this is a this is a Martha Washington geranium so let's uh, let's put that up here and then this is toad flax I brought in I brought in three of them I thought but I don't I don't see where it is well we'll go ahead and and use these here and this is that Nemesia again We'll throw that somewhere. Let's put that here. And then, oh. Um, and then I've got another, what is this? This is a brachycomb, purplish. Let's put these in here and see if they do anything. And then, I want to see if this is uh, oregano florets. I want to see if they're in flower now. I want to see if they impart anything. And then let's uh, do... I want to see if the leaves do anything, if I can find a good leaf. Let's see that. What else do we have? 
we haven't done yet. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to take the room up for that, but these um, lettuce leaves. I'll put I'll put some here just to show you how they turn out. They are they t they uh, turn out really well. Let's put something over here. All right. Oh, this anemone. I want to see. I'm going to take the hard center out. I want to know what it does. Because we haven't tested that yet. We need to make room for the anemone. It's got to have its own space. Let's put this down here. And I think we're running out of room. Oh, oh, what else we have to try? Yeah, we have to, we have to try. This is an orange cosmos. Well, what are we gonna do now? Let's put this over here. Put this down here. We gotta make room for this. So I've got to know how that turns out. And then there's another one. I'm going to sacrifice that leaf and just put a section of it here. Uh, what else? Anything? All right, I think we've gone through most everything that I wanted to try. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, I have to try. This is a uh, mallow. And when it presses, it just goes super sheer, but I was wondering, is there any color in this mallow? We need to find out. I'll put on here. I also want to know about the leaves, so let's put some leaf here. Where else can we set a mallow? Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm running out of room. Well, I'm going to sacrifice another one of these because I just have to know how the mallow does. Where can we put this? We'll put this under under there. So if it turns out, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do double deckers, but it looks like we're going to end up doing that. All right, so I just need a little lot, don't I? I'm just going to fill in a couple little areas. This is bachelor button. Just a little white spot, a little blue. I do, this will impart some bluish tones. So I'll do that. And then, oh, here's some verbena. Verbena, I'll just do a couple of them because verbena, uh, let me cut one off. Do it open face. Verbena is a, is pretty much a guaranteed color enhance. I mean, it it colors really well. And in traditional pressing, they hold their color. I brought in some red verbena too, so let's just put a couple on there. I'm not sure where we're going to put it, but we'll we'll find somewhere. Okay, put one more red verbena on. All right. That should be about it. We pretty much used all of our room up. Okay. See how I get? It's never enough. Stop, Emily, stop. Okay, I'm going to spray a little coffee water on. This isn't really strong enough that it does a whole lot, but I'll put it on there anyway. Here we go. Uh, 
I'm going to have to have a cup of coffee when this video is over. Smelling that water has made me hanker for a cup of coffee. All right, let's bring a little water on here because it's so dry. Here we go. Last sheet of the video. I'm starting in the middle and working my way out. And I'm kind of pressing, I'm not pressing super hard right now, I'm just pressing lightly to get the, the process started. Kind of get them to turn limp and start laying down flat on, on the papers. Whether or not that helps, that's just, that's my own feeling. For rightly or wrongly, for no particular reason. Okay, now I'm starting to press harder. And then we'll check in a minute and see how dry the paper's gotten. See if we have any discoloration on this side of the paper. All right, we're starting to get some. Uh, and the coffee water on this side. And uh, I don't think this is enough to, to turn it over yet. I'm not going to turn it over yet. We will turn it over, but it's still not. It's not adhered together enough. I'm afraid that if I try to turn it over now, it will. Things will fall out. You need them to be more sandwiched together. Let me think, is there anything else I want to talk about before this video is over that I've forgotten about? Um, if you haven't subscribed, or I don't know, is there some bell that you ring to be notified if I do live videos? I'm only doing live videos anymore because otherwise I'd never get anything posted. And as we go into winter, I'll be able to do more uh, project videos. That And primarily my area of interest is um, pressed flowers and botanicals, dry flowers, etc. And I've got a lot of ideas. Uh, some things I, I watch a lot of YouTube and, and I want to commend uh, people for sharing. Some of the things I'm doing I haven't seen on YouTube. I don't believe I've ever seen a video of anybody ironing for an eco dye type situation or the heat press for that matter. Um, so I, I'm, I try not to totally uh, reinvent a wheel that somebody else has already done. I try to Excuse me, if I do watch YouTube, I try to, I'm going to do my own video. I, if there is an uh, idea I've seen from somebody else uh, specifically, then I, I will cite that. Uh, some things, there's just so much of it out there, I have no idea um, where I saw it. So it's hard to cite anything specific when I have no idea. But the point is, if I do see something that somebody's done, or a lot of people have done, if I, if so many people have done it, I don't cite anything because there's, I don't know who did. Um, I try to do my own spin on it, as opposed to trying to just be a total copier. Uh, at least I, I try to. But some of these things I that I do, I, I really haven't seen other people specifically do them. So back to the point, if you uh, are, are interested in, in th this type of genre, then, uh, then subscribe. And uh, 
Okay, we're almost reaching an hour and a half. Let's press down on this and get ready to reveal. The one thing about doing this video is I don't have to do a separate reveal video because you're seeing the reveal. <laughs> you're seeing instant gratification, which is one thing that I do like about this over the oven method. The oven method, you can build up a lot of stacks, stick it in the oven for a couple of hours, and, and then you can have a whole bunch done at once. I mean, here, what we've spent an hour and a half, and we're going to have just not very many sheets. Um, although if all the sheets were larger, we'd have a lot more work with. If I did 14 by 14 or 12 by 12 sheets, we'd certainly have a more productive... Uh, this hour and a half would have yielded more productive results. Um, but they all have their own benefits. That one's nice because you can get a lot of sheets done all at once and just build your sandwiches and put it in the oven and forget about it. But this one is cool because you've got instant gratification. Mmm, 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 okay. I think... Let's just iron this right on top here. Get some pressure down, dry it out a little bit. Because it looks like we've got some... Just seeing if we could get. I'm trying to tease any other color out of the rose that I could get. Well, that's interesting. What did I do? It went brown. Well, I sprayed coffee on it. What do you expect? See if I can get any last remnants of these marguerite daisies or whatever they are, those little daisy like things. Um, I just started tearing the paper, so see, there's a good reason of using the Teflon because even though this is a non stick, it is getting funked out and I'm gonna have to clean it, so it was wanting to stick to the paper. There's enough junk on there now that it's wanting to stick to the paper. Oh yeah, look at that. We're getting lots of good action there now. I'll do this side one more time and call it good. Okay, we'll get ready for the reveal and Okay, let's be done. Move this out of the way. These are real easy to clean too. I just take them up to the kitchen sink and get a little scrubbing sponge, and they they clean easy. It looks a lot worse than it is for cleanup. The cleanup's actually pretty simple. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. I've been very happy with this session today. I think we've accomplished a lot. Um. Yeah. Look at. Look at the marguerite or whatever those yellow daisy things are. These uh, red roses went kind of purplish. The Coreopsis type flowers always impart this. Um, so this this was no different than the tick seed or the other ones. It imparted that orange color. That is just really cool. I think we could have probably pressed this a little longer and maybe gotten a little bit more, but I'm happy with that. Uh, Clean this side up. This was the uh, oregano. It it uh, just kind of bunched up and did an outline, but didn't really show any any individuality. See this red lettuce? See what how cool that is? It imparts kind of this grungy purplish. And then this was the the uh, Martha Washington geranium. They impart really good color. All right, that's the one side. Let's see what the other side did. So I, I was that the back side. This was the back side of the flowers. This is the front side of the flowers, and I especially want to see how this anemone turned out. Oh, good. Okay, that 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 did. And then here is our um, here is our 
uh, Snapdragon, which interestingly enough, the other side turned out even better. Look at that, the way they, the centers came out. And then, I don't know, this was the Martha Washington Geranium up here. This is the Martha Washington Geranium. Yeah, okay. Here was our uh, Toad Flax. Here's our Bachelor Button. Here's the Verbena, see? I was saying how Verbena is very, very intense. Kind of like mar Marigold is, is super intense. There are some things that are very intense. All right, let's hold this up to the camera and bid you goodbye. All right, so lower left was the Snapdragons on the one side, and this lower right was the Snapdragons on the other side, and then that very lower right is the lettuce leaf, and then right above that was the uh, Verbena. That was the co that was that orange cosmos, and then those yellow, daisiest looking, whatever they are. I'd have to look at the tag. Then the center is the um, oregano. And the upper left is the uh, rose. Okay. All right, thank you very much. So there's uh, doing flowers with using the iron and leaves do uh, pretty much do just the same. If they are, if they will eco die, uh, then, then I think you'll be successful. Thank you for watching and you have a wonderful day. Now, I don't know how to turn this off. This is a new codex for me, so. Uh, hmm. Okay, bye-bye.